group it by species. Alright. We're grouping it by species. We're grouping it by species, Lauren. Alright. We're installing a monarch butterfly garden here at Buttonwood Park, just to the uh, west of the greenhouses. This has been a great collaboration. The Buttonwood Park Zoo, Friends of Buttonwood Park, Bristol County Agricultural High School, and New Bedford Parks Recreation and Beaches. The young people from Bristol County Agricultural High School identified plant species that would support the monarch butterfly and have uh, been raising them from seed all year. So what we're seeing today are some of the plugs and root systems from that effort. And they're with us this morning. They're going to start installing the plant material. This is phase one of this garden, or maybe phase two if you count the preparation by the Friends of Buttonwood Park and the uh, Buttonwood Park Zoo. We will be um, adding some shrubs that the Friends of Buttonwood Park are donating at some point this fall and the um, after school program at Hayden McFadden which is a New Bedford Parks Recreation and Beach program will be coming back out here later this fall and putting some more plant material in so it's a real collaborative effort. It's going to be beautiful and it's going to uh, be a real learning experience because you know our, um, our native uh, fauna and has really taken a hit because our native flora has taken a hit. So things like our monarch butterflies are in decline. They're not finding the host species they need to support their life cycle. So this garden is going to be an effort to help them to uh, stay strong and their population numbers to stay high. And um, it's part of a national effort to uh, reintroduce monarch butterfly gardens into our landscape. What you're going to see in here are native plant species. Some of them people are going to say, hey, that's a weed. Yeah, it is a weed in some people's eyes, but to the monarch butterfly, it's an important part of their life cycle. There will be some information signage added as well. The Buttonwood Park Zoo is working on a great sign that will let people know what we're doing here so that they'll be able to appreciate the garden and, um, and all the little flying flowers that we're expecting to come and populate it. This is where the garden is going in. This wall was recently rebuilt by the City of New Bedford Masons and they've done a beautiful job. Um, the garden had uh, was an old garden. It had all different mismatched things in there. So the Friends of Buttonwood Park have been removing the material that was in there, including these last hostas that you see coming out to prepare the garden for the bu uh, butterfly garden that will be going in today. You guys, so Mary has put together the plant plan of like what's gonna I go have where. Several copies here. Do you want a copy? So do you want to explain to us what we're looking at? Okay, so what I've done is this is this is to scale. So one inch equals ten feet. And um, this is of course the wall, and then this is the bed. The bed is 84 feet by five feet. And what I've done is I've um, indicated where all the plant species are going, not just the plants that you're putting in today, but also the plants that will be added in the future by the Friends of Buttonwood Park and by the uh, Hayden McFadden After School Program. So you're going to be leaving some gaps for those plants as we move along today. If you look over here at the plant list, you'll see they're coded with the number of plants that are going in. So all you have to do is come over here. This pink represents the common milkweed and um, it, this area right here, there'll be 50 common milkweed going in. We're going to be spacing them uh, one foot on center, so that means each plant will be 12 inches from the other plant. That will give the, pl the plants time to uh, space and uh, an area to mature because these plants are, some of them are going to get quite large with time. And we want to make sure they have room to do that. And um, we uh, usually when we're planting plant material, we do that diamond shape. Do you guys, are you familiar with that? Have you done that before? So it basically, it is a diamond. It's going to be uh, one here, and then two here, and then one here. So that they, that gives you a nice 12-inch spacing all the way around. Okay. So really, what we're doing is we're taking native plant material, but we're putting them in a formal design, and that will cue people in that you know that this is an um, intentional garden. Because we are, of course, using all native plant material, and some of it people are going to say, "Why did they put that weed in there?" Well. We're going to have signage that will explain that, but we also, you know, by, by uh, designing a deliberate um, garden, that will also cue people in that this is an, an intentional garden with a real intentional purpose. 
okay? Anybody have any questions about that? Because I have plenty and I can hand them out and you guys can start trying to so space them out. So today we're doing this top column yes. right here. So these are the plants that you're bringing. The second section will be the Friends of Buttonwood Park plants that are coming at a later date and then down here the material that's going to be added by the after school program. So we're dealing with this top section up here. I've got some tapes in my car and a wheel. I can lay those out so that you can all have um, an indication of, you know, how where it is. So maybe the next best step would, um, if we have two, four, we have eight species that we're focusing on today. Do you think we could organize the actual plants into those eight species so that we know what we're working with? Okay. So maybe make eight um, clumps of plants. What is common goat? Common goat over there. Primarily, we've got mostly milkweeds, uh, two different kinds: rose milkweed and a common milkweed. We also have another one that's. Uh, butterflies tend to like. It's called butterfly weed, ironically enough. Um, so we've got some that we've had um, some germination with. We've got some other ones that we're going to plant anyway, even though they haven't necessarily germinated yet, because um, they might the seeds might still be viable, but it was a tough summer for lots of plants. And all the plants are a foot apart? Yes, 12 inches on time. I'm Carrie Hawthorne, the Curator of Education at the Buttonwood Park Zoo. Um, we're really excited to be here today. This has been over a year in the works. Uh, it first started with a conversation between myself and Jonathan, one of our board members, um, just talking about monarchs and milkweed and, you know, is there anything the zoo could be doing? We already were doing a conservation project with the Carner Blue Butterfly, with New Hampshire Fish and Game, and we're always looking for ways that we can locally you know, help wildlife, but also educate the public. And so um, my first step was to figure out, was there a local school that might have the capacity to help us with this project? And Bristol Aggie seemed like a perfect fit. Um, Brian and Aaron have been super helpful. They actually offered to donate all of the plant supplies. So over the summer, they have their greenhouses available, um, which was something we didn't have. And so they were able to purchase all of the seeds, purchase all of the planting materials, and actually grow these plants for us over the summer. And now they're providing all of their students um, from the conservation program there uh, to actually help us do the actual planting. So we're really excited to have them. We also did get some funding from the Garden Club of Buzzards Bay um, through a grant where they are going to be providing money for the signage that's going to go at this garden and also the one inside the zoo. That way we can educate the public about what they're looking at, why we've made such efforts to put this garden here, um, and what's going on with monarchs. Monarch butterflies uh, population is under great pressure and the numbers are decreasing and various organizations uh, that we've been in contact with are encouraging the planting of uh, milkweed and other plants uh, that would encourage uh, the monarch butterfly population to increase. We're planting it in the fall uh, because the fall happens to be the best time to plant perennial plants. They have the fall and into the winter to uh, develop nice strong roots and next spring they'll pop. Opposite the new Monarch Butterfly Garden we're installing right now is a, a recently planted uh, a garden that we call a pollinator garden and it's really aimed at uh, encouraging bees and other pollinating insects uh, to come over and we hope that between the two gardens they'll, they'll complement each other.
My name is Jonathan Walge. Um, I was a professor at Brown University for 38 years, retired in 2010, and joined the board of directors at Buttonwood Park Zoo to help with their education program. So I've been working very closely with Gary Hawthorne and Jen and the other people in that program to um, develop what I think is a, a, a gold mine for education at the zoo and Buttonwood Park around it. Um, my interaction with this project was that I've used monarch butterflies in my classes for years and years and years to get kids interested in biology. Think about a little insect that looks like it doesn't fly very well that's going to head off from here to Mexico and its great-grandchildren will be back here and those children will on their own without anybody else help, helping them also get back to Mexico. And it gets kids wondering about what's going on. And plus there's the whole story of milkweeds and, and monarchs and so on. So. That's how I got associated with this project, um, and I think that um, in Buttonwood Park we're growing an amazing collaboration between Friends of Wood, Buttonwood Park and the zoo to, for educational opportunities for New Bedford um, school kids, uh, a lot of whom are fairly close to here, and um, I think the future is beginning to really look up. Real men know that getting tested is the way to take care of their families. That's why real men wear gowns. For a list of the tests you need, go to ahrq.gov.